Hi, Zach. Welcome to the Humanitarian Open Mapping Sessions at State of the Map Africa 2023. Um, it's great to have you here. We've invited you because this session, the opening session in this track, is, uh, is about open mapping and slum mapping, informal settlement mapping. And you have a lot of experience in that. So we thought it would be good for you to frame this session. So maybe you could just introduce yourself for people that don't know you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Zakaria Mwindi. I work with Map Kibera as the project coordinator. Uh, I've been involved with, with the organization since its inception and also an active OSM contributor for the for those number of years. Yeah. And right now is a special moment for Map Kibera, right? Yeah. Think... Yeah. Um, the same month, uh, November, that's when uh, the Map Kibera initiative uh, was started. So it's just exactly 14 years uh, since we uh, the project started. Uh, yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so Mark Kabira was a pioneering project, the first that leveraged open community mapping, open street map to improve the lives and livelihoods of people living in slum communities. So tell me how that started and what it felt like to be a part of that. Yeah, so Map Kibera uh, started in 2009 uh, with the aim of just uh, helping uh, the community uh, understand the importance of com uh, of mapping their area and use of this information to advocate for change and also add, uh, make the area visible so that people can be able to know uh, and indeed this place do exist. As much as Kibera is popular, but also there was need also to have like a map. So in 2009, uh, when um, OSM was still young, uh, the area of Kibera was still a blank spot. So the initiative was just to help put the, the area into a map so that everyone can be able to know about more about Kibera and the kind of uh, facilities and amenities uh, that are within the area. And yeah. Cool. So Matt Kibera is pretty much the same age as Hot. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you were you were in the project from the start? You were a younger man then. What did it feel like to be a part of this new new thing? Uh, I would say at first, uh, I would say it was in, 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 interesting. Uh, I got to learn about the project through one of the organization that was being uh, in, engaged uh, for this uh, for this project. So they invited me over. Because the idea was just to have the organization bring uh, young people that they are working with in the community to help with the with the mapping. So I just got to learn about that through that organization and went through training, a one week training. Then after that, we, we kicked off uh, the actual mapping uh, where we were just uh, looking for all the key landmarks within the area things that we thought uh, would be relevant to have on the map. Things like schools, uh, churches, mosques, uh, key landmarks, uh, features as water points. In Kibera, water points also act like a key landmark because you can easily direct someone uh, to a specific place using a specific water point. Yeah, so after three weeks of mapping, we developed the first uh, digital map of, of Islam. Uh, that is Kibera, and I don't think this had been done anywhere else in the world. And the map was so dense that it was even a challenge to have it printed out. So we had to do our best to cover whatever we could at that point because we had covered so much. I think out of the excitement, guys went uh, over and just decided to map everything within their community, uh, within their villages. So we had a lot of information that we, we collected back then. It sounds super exciting and really kind of a quite cutting edge, like the first digital map of a slum. It's uh, it's uh, it's impressive. So obviously we're 14 years later now. Map Kibera as a project has had some profound effects on the community living there. Um, what do you observe as the kind of key positive impacts that you've that you, that, you, that you've seen during your during your 14 years of involvement? I'll say one of them is community representation uh, through use of these digital tools. 
because uh, I think the idea of the project was just to have digital tools, provide the community with digital tools that are able to tell their stories from, from their own perspective. And Kibera being a slum, uh, there are a lot of negative stories that were being told about the area. Uh, but using these maps will represent, help the community represent their area, show that uh, as much as you're hearing this about Kibera, there are these positive things that happen in this community. So the map will provide them with opportunity to uh, represent their communities very well and their issues that concern them accurately on the maps. So yeah, so the map was just helping with that aspect of uh, represent and making the place more visible. Uh, that everyone could know uh, that indeed this place do exist and these kind of services uh, do exist. Apart from that, I will say there's, uh, we've also seen improve of service provision uh, through uh, the maps that you've generated, uh, sharing it with the community and uh, the government offices, both the national government and the local government uh, within the area, NGOs, and other 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 organizations that work within has helped to understand the needs of the community and has also helped in terms of uh, allocating of resources equitably because we have 13 villages so in terms of uh, ensuring that every village is represented well and uh, they're able to get uh, equitable resources within this area so for instance a project like open schools uh, really helped in uh, making schools in in Kibera uh, and even other parts of the informal settlements to be located more effectively, uh, both by the government and other organizations leading to improve uh, in service delivery. But we've also seen uh, growth in community engagement uh, and a lot of participation. One of the things that we do is try to young, work with young people. So seeing uh, more young people involved in the project and also having community forums where we engage it. We've seen an increase in terms of uh, how the community is being involved in terms of issues to do with development, uh, either through uh, the initiative, but also seeing it in other uh, programs that have emerged out of this uh, initiative. Very cool. And I really encourage people to go and check out Map Kabir online. There's tons that Zach hasn't said that is that is true of the project but that's a that's a really nice few kind of key examples okay so last question moving from the past to the future we have a discussion panel following this and on that panel we have um the president of a uh, slum association slum community association in Kobikok, cameroon we have a representative from bamenda city council in cameroon we have a representative of a university and a youth mappers chapter in Namibia who's working uh, with shack dwellers um, on, a, on a project. And we have someone from HOT whose job is to provide innovative tech to support communities and partners in our North and West Africa open mapping hub. So what, what key pieces of advice would you give them in order to frame the conversations that's coming around successful slum mapping projects and the future of slum mapping? Uh, I will say uh, one of the key thing uh, is uh, putting the community at the center of the of the initiative. Uh, putting the community at the center means that we involve the community uh, from the beginning of the project. So having things like community forums where we invite them to share about the project and what are the goals of the project and what we hope to attain uh, from the from this project. And then at the center is involving also the community in terms of now implementation of the project. So if there's any anything to do with our data collection, we can have young people uh, from this area involved in the data collection. One, it helps in the community buy-in as the community uh, really feel like, ah, indeed, if we have one of our young people uh, participating in this process, then we can trust this initiative. Because again, we have problems where we, uh, one thing that we've also been observing over the years is uh, that feeling of the community where this is a project by a different organization from another area. So we'll just take it, uh, whatever they'd say, we'll just uh, sit down and listen, and then help have them do it but will not uh, be fully involved in it. And that has really led to a lot of uh, initiatives and projects, even within uh, Kibera, that have really 
uh, failed big time, I can say that, because you start a project and then two years down the line, no one, because there was no community buy-in or involvement of the young people or even the community in, in large, then the project just stalls in, even after a lot of money has bumped, been pumped into the project. So I'll say involving them at the beginning, at the center, in the, in the implementation of the project, but also at the end of the project. Uh, I would say post uh, project uh, engagement where you bring in the, co the same community again, bring them back and just share now the information. Say uh, at the beginning, this is what we, we intended to, to achieve or we intended to cover uh, from this project. These are the outcomes of this project. Do you have any feedback? Do you have anything that you need to add? And I think this really helps even in terms of validating the data, but also trying to fill in the uh, data gaps that may have uh, occurred in the process, either collecting the data or implementing the project. So uh, bringing the community at the end really helps in terms of even sustainability, because once they are involved, even at the end, they feel like, yeah, indeed, we've been part of this project. We we are involved, for, we have been there from the beginning. We've seen it being implemented, and here we are at the end. Uh, even in terms of handing over the project, because again, that's usually the problem. You do a big, a good project, then because the, 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 there wasn't any kind of community buy-in, you are handing over a project to a, a community that even was not interested in that. Uh, maybe their need was something different. So I would say uh, that aspect of community participation before during and even after the project really plays a, a key role uh, in the success of a project. Because if you lose them at any point, then uh, I would say in terms of sustainability, the project won't be sustainable because the community have to be have, have to be there uh, all along. And even when you are, you are leaving, they're able to take up the initiative and continue with it. Like for example, of, of uh, the mapping initiative by Map Kibera, uh, because of the community engagement, the sustainability bit of it was that even the community saw the need of it. And they were like, now we want to, this project should not end after the three weeks. We want to be part of this. We want to keep updating this information. We want to collect more information about this place, uh, about this area and cover more topics. So I'll say it, it really helps in terms of buy-in and also getting the trust of the community. Yeah. And the other thing, maybe, sorry, lastly, to just say, uh, I think a lot of also training, uh, I will say one thing that I'm foreseeing even the future uh, is through uh, the with the evolving of the technology, we are seeing a lot of community participation. And I will say one thing I've also been observing is, and we really need to push for this, is uh, involving more women in the in the tech space, in the open mapping initiative. And I can say I'm seeing a vast growth of uh, women uh, who are getting involved in the project. And this has been successful through also the training, because I think uh, it's really been helpful uh, seeing even the gap, uh, the gender gap that has been there over the years narrowing down because we are having more women uh, involved in the project. Yeah, and I'll say. Great. Thank you, Zach. And I remember Lucy Fondo represented Map Kabir on a panel last year at State of the Map Africa, yeah. or, or maybe State of the Map, I can't remember, but I remember seeing her on the panel and speaking very eloquently on the subject. Yeah. Zach, thank you very much. Happy birthday to Map Kabira. Um, we you. hopefully see you at State of the Map in yeah. Kenya next year. Yeah, next year in okay. Nairobi. Karibuni sana. I'll come to Nairobi. Thank you, sir. Okay.